the jungle, one of the most formidable environments known to man. The Malaysian jungle is the oldest on the planet and is even older than the Amazon. The diversity of species in this ecosystem is vast and many of the animals are found nowhere else. My name's Adam Thorne. I'm an animal biologist and explorer. I travel the world in search of the most dangerous, weirdest and rarest creatures on Earth. I'm in the oldest rainforest on the planet, looking for, in my opinion, one of the most bizarre creatures this jungle has to offer, and it's one of my personal favourites. I'm going in search of the Malayan Tapir. I'm starting my journey on the water. The river acts as a natural highway through the rainforest and is the easiest way to get deep into the jungle. If I were to do this journey by foot, it would have taken me days. But using this river, I can get more isolated quicker and then focus more of my time searching for this unusual creature. My driver, Christopher Boatman, is going to leave us here and return back to his village. Thank you. From now on, we're by ourselves. So this is going to be my home for the next few days. I've just taken a six hour ride through the river into deep jungle. I'm going to trek as far out as I can, away from as many people as I can, this will give me the best chances of finding the taper. I have five days until the boatman picks me up from the same beach where he dropped me off. And that means five days to find the taper. Hopefully that's enough time to find such an elusive creature. There's a few different ways to pronounce taper, which may confuse people. You can say taper, tapia, tapia, or tapia. Either one of these is correct. Evidence of an animal. Check this out. Oh, it is fresh as well. Wow. Look at that. That is fresh snakeskin. It's still wet. That actually went inside the tree. I just pulled that from the inside of this tree. Now, it's probably been in a hole that's been formed by a boar for some sort of uh, beetle inside the tree. And a snake has made a nice little home for itself inside that hole. Uh, judging by the scales on this snake, and you can even see the head there with its eyes, that looks like a colubrid of some sort. So a back fang snake, and it's got large eyes as you can see there, which means it's an active hunter. So it relies on its eyesight more than its sense of smell and taste. That is cool, decent size as well. It's about a meter long, maybe a little bit longer. Awesome. This rainforest is home to nearly 300 different species of reptile, and it wasn't long until I found one. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Oh, honestly, this is giving me a good run, but I can manage to catch him. Ah, uh, but they catch me sometimes. Ooh, those talons. Look at the size of this talon. That is enormous. Yeah, and painful. So this is a monitor lizard, a Malaysian monitor. And they're a relatively small species of monitor lizard. This guy won't get much bigger than this. Nowhere near the size of, for example, a water monitor that's also found in Malaysia they get to about two and a half meters plus but this guy I've never caught one of these before so it's a first for me but, oh, he's got beautiful scale colorations on him it's almost like a galaxy looks really cool these guys have forked tongues just like a snake 
and they use them in the exact same way a snake does. They put their tongue out, pick up scent particles in the air, bring it back into an organ on the roof of their mouth called the Jacobson's organ. And this registers it as taste. So it smells and tastes kind of blend in. It's really cool. Look at his eyes. He's got quite big eyes for a monitor lizard. And this is for hunting in low light environments like this jungle. The canopy is that thick that light doesn't penetrate to the jungle floor very well. But he can still see amazingly. Monitor lizards have fantastic eyesight. He'll be eating smaller lizards like skinks and dragons. Frogs, I love frogs. And also bird eggs, they love bird eggs. So I'm gonna let this guy go before he hacks me up anymore. Look at that talon, right in there. That's a good find. See you, buddy. Told you they were fast. Look at the size of this tree that's fallen down in this jungle. This tree must be hundreds of years old as well. And it would weigh more than a jumbo jet. Do you imagine the noise that would have made hitting the floor? Absolutely insane. But it's not surprising. Trees like this fall down the jungle all the time. And that's what can make it pretty dangerous. If you imagine something this size falling on your head, you'd have a pretty nasty headache the next morning. But just to give you a scale of the size of this thing, I'll climb up onto it and show you the trail of devastation that's left in its fall. Holy heck. That's a big tree. This tree probably measures 60 meters plus easily. And it'll weigh hundreds of tons. But look at the space it's cleared in the canopy. This will soon be eaten by the jungle. The jungle eats everything. And in a few months time, It'll be hard to even find this tree again. These are pretty interesting. It's almost like this tree's died, it's fallen over, yet it's still trying to grow roots out of its branches. And check out these things, they're kind of creepy looking. They remind me of uh, District 9, the movie where he starts growing the alien's hand out of himself. I look kind of like the fingers. Some of these trees are the biggest I've ever seen in my life, and a lot of them measure over 50 meters tall. This is a testament to how ancient this rainforest is, and a lot of these trees have been around for over 100 years. But that's enough about trees. I'm already halfway through the day, and I need to continue my search for the mysterious taper. Oh, nice. Mud bath. Oh, it's a nice uh, river. It's pretty decent size, but the water seems pretty shallow. So I'm gonna cross it, get to the other side, explore the jungle there, and it'll give me a chance to wash off my boots as well. Searching for such a shy creature in such an enormous landscape, I wonder, have I bitten off more than I can chew?
This place is full of natural wonders, and it wasn't long until I came across one in need of exploring. This looks like the entrance of a cave system. Now you don't find taper down caves, but you do find a lot of other species. One in particular, and I think you all know what that is. Bats. I can already smell them. So, get out a flashlight. sized roost of bats and then micro bats which mean they eat insects and they rely on their echolocation to find their prey. Now they have really poor eyesight but amazing hearing so I have to be very quiet when trying to get near them because they'll just explode and fly straight out this gate. The cave floor and surrounding rocks are coated in a thick layer of bat droppings, or guano. But that's not the only reason why I need to watch where I put my hands. Caves make fantastic homes for snakes, and they can hide quite easily in rock crevices. I'm trying to stay as quiet as I can so I don't scare away too many bats. But in a cave, trying to stay quiet is definitely easier said than done. around this cave and nearly every one I'm looking at is a little frog. I just popped my head up in that one, one turned around and sprayed me with urine straight in the face. So don't blame him but check this guy out. A toad this is a bufo toad. Now, the difference between toads and frogs is fairly obvious. Look at his skin. It's dry and warty. And that's where this myth that if you touch a toad you get warts, but that's absolute nonsense. He does, however, have venom glands just behind his ears here. Now, when ingested by a bird, a monitor lizard, a snake, it'll poison them and it will often kill him. It could even kill a human being if it would eat that. Now he does have juicy legs that might be tasty, but if you ate those venom glands, you're done. But look at the size of this guy, look at his hands. It almost like a alien hand. He looks like something from Star Wars, I reckon. Oh, he's a beautiful little guy. You right, you ready to go back? Yes. All right, we'll put you back. Oh. Spat on me. <laughs> Alright, we'll pop it back. I could get this vine to the top. I'm losing daylight fast and I need to find a suitable place to set up camp. I'm going to try to find a spot close to water. Lots of animals come out at night to drink and also eat mud and clay which contains salts and other minerals. Although this area is home to many potentially dangerous animals like tigers, leopards, elephant and rhinoceros, this knife is purely to cut dead vines. 
I would never use a weapon to defend myself against an animal. If I was to get attacked, it would be my fault, not the animal's. Tapers are often found near water and they're surprisingly good swimmers. The sun's about to go down, so I'm gonna set up camp on this beach and keep my eye out for any that come up to the water. I'm not gonna light any fires. I haven't worn any cologne or deodorant because they have amazing sense of smell. Their eyesight is very poor, but their hearing and smell is amazing. After walking in the jungle all day, there's always that downer that you're gonna to have to go through the arduous task setting up your tent. Just takes it out of you, you know? This is where I'll be spending the next 12 hours. And to tell you the truth, I can't think of a more beautiful place to spend the night. Tapers are crepuscular animals, which means they're active at dusk and at dawn. But they're also active during the night, and that's when they feed and drink from the water, which is why I set up the tent right next to the river. Now it hasn't gotten dark yet, but when it does, I'll be extremely quiet because I have ultra sensitive hearing. But until then, I'm gonna see if there's any more animals hanging around at this time. I got no sleep last night. I was up every half hour or so, having a shine of the torch around the river to look for any taper, but none last night. There was plenty of other animals walking around. There were deer, pigs, I could hear them sniffing around the tent. There's lots of tracks in the sand around here, but not the animal we're looking for. So I'm gonna head across this river further inland where there's lots of streams, tributaries and ponds and hopefully we can find our creature further into the jungle. After the taper no-show last night, I'm even more determined to find one, even if this means exploring more harsh terrain. If I don't find this creature in four days, I'll return home very disappointed. This river is crystal clear and teeming with fish. This indicates a lack of pollution in the area, which is a reminder of just how isolated I am. While I'm here, I'm gonna stock up on fresh water. It's a good idea to do this as often as you can. You never know when you'll get another opportunity. Water looks pretty shallow here. But just out there, it gets black and really dark. So I'm guessing it gets pretty deep there but it's still, so it should be out of way through it pretty easily. The water may be still and easy to swim in, but it does contain large crocodiles, which makes this crossing extremely dangerous. By the looks of it, I'm heading into deeper and denser jungle. This means harder work for me, but it increases my chances of finding the taper.
righty. Woo. Some deep spots, but we're out of it. If I would have been here two months ago in the rainy season, this river would have been about 30 meters deeper and about half a kilometer wider. Trust sunken logs. My suspicions were right. The forest on this side of the river appears to be much more harsh, and to make matters worse, I have to scale a near vertical 100 meter hill. Although I find it difficult climbing a hill of this size, a taper weighing nearly half a ton can scale this with ease. That was tough, but who said finding taper was going to be easy? Tapers may look like big, slow-moving animals, but they are actually incredibly nimble. They can move through thick jungle far more easily than I can, and they can do this basically unheard and with surprising speed. I'm not even sure what species it is. I've never seen a frog that looks anything like this. And it looks like it's nocturnal as well, those big eyes. And look at the color of those eyes. They're insane. It looks almost like an owl. But I wouldn't mind researching to see which species this is because I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the species in this area and I've never seen anything like this one. What a beautiful frog. Look at the belly of him. Little spots on him. Looks like the inside of a dragon fruit. Oh, amazing. We'll let him on his way. The more you handle frogs, the more they dry out and their skin needs a lot of moisture. So I let him on his way before I disturb him too much. It turns out that this is a spotted litter frog and they are very much at home amongst the dry, dead leaves on the ground. I was walking my dog in the park just before I got here and a couple of elderly women approached me and asked, what's the next animal you're going looking for? I said, the taper. Now, like most people, they immediately said, oh, the anteater. So there's this common misconception that tapers are anteaters, when in fact, they're not even closely related to anteaters. They don't even eat ants. They're completely herbivorous. In fact, their closest living relative is a rhinoceros. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. They're not anteaters. Tapers are ancient creatures and have changed little over tens of millions of years. As well as rhinoceros, tapers share an ancestral lineage with modern day horses. This is a Malaysian agamid lizard, and they're a tree-dwelling lizard. So they'll spend the majority of their lives up in the canopies, walking around, eating uh, insects like crickets and beetles, stuff like that. And what's interesting about these lizards are this flap of skin under their neck, and that's called a dewlap. And they use that to communicate with other species. So he'll be flicking it to attract females, and he'll also be flicking it to scare off rival males. Now he's lost his tail here. That's broken off. Probably a bird or maybe a civet has tried to attack him and that tail's gone, but it will grow back. It's already starting to grow back, a little nub there. Now other animals, reptiles like iguanas, they can be six feet long with a tail base that thick and they can even detach their tails. So you see how he's a vibrant green color? He was even more green when I got him out of the tree. He's gone this darker color, 
because he's not happy with me and I don't really blame him. But he's a beautiful lizard and we'll uh, release him back into his natural environment, the trees. Tail detachment and regeneration is a feat only a few lizard species can achieve. It is common among some skinks and geckos, but is also found in a few species of dragon, like that agamid lizard. Lizards aren't the only animals that live in trees. In fact, about 50% of mammals found here live in the canopy. It's not just the leaves and branches that make good homes for wildlife. They can also be found inside the trunk of the tree, which I'm just about to find out. A toke gecko. Now tokes are a large species of gecko found throughout Southeast Asia. Oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. And they do have a nasty bite. I have been bitten by ones before and they do hurt. This is probably the biggest one I've found, but believe it or not, they get a lot bigger than this. Now this is a female, because when I caught it, there was eggs in that uh, decayed tree. Oh, beautiful, look at the eyes on her. How beautiful they are, a nice blue with that sort of swampy green iris. And it looks like, calm down, calm down girl, she's missing a limb. Now I bet that's from another toke gecko. They can be quite territorial and one of them would have come along and just nipped that limb off. But she's doing fine, that limb's healed up nicely, you can't even see any scarring on actually. And she gets around very easily with three legs. And these pads with the claw on them gives her a lot of grip on trees and also on flat surfaces. They can climb walls, piece of cake. They're such a beautiful lizard. I love toke geckos. Now they can drop their tails so I'm trying not to stress her out too much so she does drop that because that's another defense that she won't have against a predator. But beautiful animal, beautiful lizard and I'll let Mama go back to her eggs. Two more nights have gone by and I still have found no evidence of a taper. It's now my last full day of searching and tonight will be my last night here. Tomorrow I'll be making my way back to the place where the boat dropped me off nearly four days ago. It's madness to continue to try something the same way and expect different results, so I've decided to try something new. Instead of setting up my tent on a flat piece of land, I'm going to set it up on top of a hill. This will overlook an open piece of jungle that preferably contains some water and mud. This will give me a good vantage point and will make it easier for me to get close to the animal. It's a long shot, but hopefully it's worth the risk. The sun is starting to go down, so this is where I'll spend the night. I'll sit and wait all night, shining my flashlight down to the stream every 20 minutes or so. If I shine the torch too often, it may prevent a weary taper from coming out into the open. Hopefully this method works, as it's evident that morale is very low. Well, it's my last night here in this jungle and I'm starting to think, I'm not gonna find this taper. I mean, they're shy and elusive creatures and a lot of the times, if you get anywhere near them, they're straight out of there. But tapers are endangered. All species are endangered. There's five altogether. And the Malayan taper is the only one native to Asia. It's also the biggest. And the main reason why they're endangered is because of deforestation. I mean, they're not hunted for food by the Malayan people because most of them are Muslim. And because of the taper's resemblance to a pig, the meat is kind of taboo. So it's purely because of habitat loss. And hopefully tonight I can find one in the wild. But it's not looking good. I've just seen a Malayan taper. And I'm so excited to see this animal. We've been here for so long, and it's our last night. 
so lucky to have found one. I was getting a little bit nervous that we weren't going to see one. But there's one about 30 meters into the jungle that way. So I'm going to leave this camera behind and take this little camera because that'll give us our best chance at getting close to this animal. So the fewer people, the better. Let's see how close I can get to it. I'll take that light. favorite animals of all time but it's hard to be quiet because this leaf litter is so crunchy and their hearing is amazing and their sense of smell is even better because I'm standing up a hill I'm closer to the main camera than the taper is this makes the taper look much smaller than it really is. This taper is actually about four feet high at the shoulder, about the size of a Jersey cow. I'm now about 30 feet, 10 meters away from it and it looks like it's a female. She's big. Females generally get a little bit bigger than males. She looks like she's 300 kilos plus. She is big. Oh. She just moved her uh, proboscis up and down. She's breathing in, she's smelling me. That is also a defensive display, is lifting up that proboscis, which is the small trunk. She knows I'm here. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, she's, she's running, she's running, she's running. Tapers can be dangerous when threatened. They have large incisor teeth and powerful jaws. In 1998, a female Malayan taper bit a man's arm off at mid-bicep, as well as causing facial injuries and a punctured lung. The man died from these injuries, but it's an example of the power these animals possess. Even tigers are reluctant to prey upon them. Oh man, one of my favorite animals of all time. We got one. We got a taper. Oh my god, that was the coolest thing ever. That was insane. I got to about 10 meters away from it and then she started bolting into the jungle. And they are so agile. She took two gallops, maybe a bit more, and she was in the jungle. And from then on, I heard nothing. They were, she was silent as, just straight into the rainforest. And I followed her because I thought that she had just stopped there, but she was gone. They are so agile. I mean, an animal looking like that, you would think would be uh, clumsy and noisy in the forest, but they are so quiet. I mean, I didn't even hear her at the start. I just randomly shone my torch, and there she was. Yes! Oh, last night. Thank heck for that. We got one. Last night was the best night's sleep I've had in a jungle so far, but I was still up bright and early, ready to start my journey through the rainforest and back to civilization. My spirit and morale is at an all-time high, which makes this day-long trek a walk in the park. Soon I'll be back to the beach where I was dropped off nearly five days ago, and I still can't believe how lucky I was to find that taper on the very last night. The jungles of Malaysia are truly one of the most biodiverse environments on earth. Every time I come here, there is never a shortage of surprises. For me, this jungle is the most beautiful and magical of places. Every time I leave it, I miss it and it keeps drawing me back.
As I watch my boat approaching from the distance, I can't help but think back to all the amazing animals I saw on this adventure. These creatures are all beautiful and unique in their own way, but one definitely stood out from the rest, the taper, a creature that has fascinated me since I was a child. There are roughly the same amount of taper in Malaysia than there are giant pandas in the wild, which reminds me of just how lucky I was to see one. It's a horrible thought to think that these majestic creatures are now in danger of becoming extinct, and it saddens me to say that in the near future, all that may remain of these fascinating beings will be the memories of the shy giants that once roamed these forests. Here's the boat ready to take me back to civilization and a perfect way to sum up our taper expedition. I'll see you next time, or if you're Malaysian, jump a laggy. <laughs>